Hey guys, welcome to the um, channel and today I'm going to be dis discussing which carnivorous plants are going to be very easy for uh, beginners. And so the very first plant I'm, I'm going to introduce to you is the uh, Ven Venus fly fly trap here. Venus fly traps, despite their reputation for being for being near impossible to uh, grow for of uh, first first timers, is that is that of um, they're actually very easy. It's it's just due due to them of um, is it's just due due to the myths and rumors about these plants being being tropical, which is not not true. And they also need need a winter uh, dormancy, which that most people are not uh, informed about. There is only one species of this plant, however, there are maybe hundreds of uh, cultivars of, of this plant, ranging from the red dragon, which is right right here, and in a brighter light, the uh, leaves and the traps are going to be a bright maroon in color, and while of, uh, others, others may have got bigger, bigger traps, others can be a lot larger than their... Uh, Others, but they're all still still the same same species still the same species. Move moving along, the next species or genus is the uh, Saracenia. These guys are found in North North America, like the fly traps are. The most cold hardy of the group is in fact Saracenia perea, and along with their uh, hybrids, are very uh, hard, cold tolerant. They can survive being frozen. If you happen to live further up north and you want a uh, plant that happens to be a little more more uh, hardy to the cold, to, to the cold, the uh, care instructions for these guys is uh, just just like or very similar to the uh, Venus flytrap. These these guys grow in bogs, so so use uh, peat moss or long fiber spina moss with nothing in it. That's that's the key key here. A, a lot of uh, p people are temp tempted to use of um, soils which have got which have got fertilizers in it, and and if uh, anyone who is familiar with uh, carnivorous plants, we all know that that that's a no no because that fertilizers will burn the roots and uh, it will kill the plants. However, of um, However, the uh, beauty of uh, Saracenia is that there are about eight to ten different species, depending on uh, who, who you ask, and they can easily be uh, crossbred with each other, creating some very unique pictures, col pictures and uh, colors. And some uh, some uh, Saracenia produce uh, different uh, their best pictures during the best time of the year. Some can be done in the early spring, while others in in summer or in the early fall. However, the hybrids are not sterile, as with many other other uh, carnivorous plants. They can be hybridized even further, which which will like uh, which will like uh, give you good looking pictures through throughout their uh, growing season until uh, they they go uh, dormant. Move moving along, the next carnivorous plant I'm going to introduce uh, you to are in fact the Drosera or a Sundews, which is in fact the second largest genus of uh, carnivorous plants in the world. The only the largest group is in fact the uh, Utricularias, which in, which which includes the uh, bladderworts, and with the uh, Sundews being so widespread and dive to diverse, there are going to be different species. And some species, like the king sundew, which is Drosera regia, is going to be a little bit more difficult to uh, grow, grow than, than, than a, a lot of other species of sun sundews. This, this one in particular here, it's called the cape sundews, and this thing is, this thing is very easy to grow for a beginner. If you do not want a Venus flytrap as your first carnivorous plant, or if you just want something different than a Venus flytrap, this is your your plant. A uh, many many uh, I heard that many uh, orchid growers like like to have some uh, sundews growing alongside their uh, orchids to actually uh, control the fun the the uh, fungus gnats that may be plaguing their plants, or along with other small insects. And, and if you look at the uh, their leaves here, they're getting covered with the insects that get glued to their leaves. And if you watch in slow motion camera with a lot of the species, you'll actually see the leaf curl upon their uh, up, up, upon their hapless upon their uh, helpless in insect prey, hoping to escape. No, no, help me, help me. Okay, enough with the dramatics. 
And so from these, these guys are very easy. And this particular species here, Drosera capensis, these guys are labeled as a, as a uh, subtropical species of sundew. However, they're so, however, they can tolerate uh, cooler c conditions. They, they can actually tolerate um, a brief frost for a short, short, amount of, short amount of time. If you happen to live like in zone at eight or nine, you can actually have these guys in your mini bog garden, like like mini bog garden, garden here, and they will t t t tolerate brief periods of frost. And of uh, the all the leaves here may die die off, but as long as the root si system survives, they will start to come back from the roots, and they're also very easy to pro propagate through via leaf uh, cuttings, which I may have to do in a few future video. But not not today. Another species that's also easy are certain species and hybrids of um, nep Nepenthes here. This this one here isn't an actual species. It's a, a hybrid called uh, called uh, Gaia. I found this guy at um, Ace Hardware, and I found these are one of the few carnivorous plants that's best not to grow in peat peat moss because that of a, a few species like like of a uh, alada and maybe maybe vent ventricosa and along with the hybrid of the two called vent ventricosa uh, sorry or ventricosa ventricosa whatever it's called the species it's called they can actually be a planted in peat but the best planting medium for for these guys is a combination of um long fibered sphagnum and per perlite but make sure there's nothing in in uh in either no new no, no excess of uh, fertilizers at all and, and the pictures themselves the pictures themselves can be quite dramatic th themselves depending on the species or a uh, hybrid they, they can they can get uh, quite big big enough to uh, capture small uh, rodents so so these guys, they, they just like to have their soil, their medium moist, but not sopping wet. And, uh, and another species that's actually very easy to uh, grow are a few of the species of Eutrichgillaria. This one here, um, some people say it's a epiphyte, other people say it's a uh, terrestrial. I'm not exactly sure. I read, uh, it, I read about both. Being being in an epiphyte or a uh, ter for, or a terrestrial. If someone knows for certain, just leave it in, in the comments below, so I'll know for certain. If you happen to be be more sure. Well, okay. This one here is a terrestrial terrestrial spe species. This this one here is Eutrichularia levita, and these guys will spread like like grass. However, the reason the uh, the uh, traps are actually underground, uh, the, uh, the their their traps are actually underground, and they uh, trap mic microscopic uh, organisms. All bladderworts are like 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 that. The reason why they're called bladderworts is because their their traps are shaped like little bladders, and, and if something brushes up against them, they they get slurped inside, trapped, and they'll eventually get di digested by by the plant itself. And this this guy, uh, a lot of the terrestrial kind are found uh, in Australia, and Levita. I think this guy might be found in South Africa, but but if, uh, I'm not a uh, hundred percent sure. And Sanders, this one's supposed to have both Eutrichularia and uh, Levita in it, and uh, the uh, Sanders sonsoni is found uh, in Australia, and the uh, Eutrichularia long longifolia they are found in South America. And of um, so and another, and uh, that that is in another easy species which I currently do not have is is from the from the genus Ping Ping Quick Kikilla, and those are called the uh, butterworts. The the easiest ones I've read about, but I haven't had the pleasure of uh, growing yet, are called is called Ping Ping Quickula Mor Moriensis, and those guys are from. Mex from uh, Mexico, and there are a lot of hybrids among of uh, Mex Mexican uh, butterworts. I don't know of how vi viable the uh, hybrids are of those. They must be pretty viable because there's some pretty complex hy hybrids of them. Hybrids uh, out there. I have uh, hope this uh, helps helps anyone. 
and, and if you have, have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to uh, let me know, and I'll see you next time.